everybody. I'm Renee from Tailspin Farm and I am hopping on today um, to show you some characteristics of French Angora rabbits. Um, obviously I am in my barn today. It is cage cleaning day and grooming day. Um, so you get to see me in all my glory here today, but I wanted to get this video done. I have quite a few new subscribers and followers lately and welcome to you all. I appreciate you all being here and I've had a lot of questions lately. And so I've been able to put some videos together um, with those questions coming through um, quite a bit right now. And uh, for those of you who are new, um, I will do my usual spiel. I am a fiber artist. I spin, knit, crochet, dye yarn. I raise angora rabbits. I have been raising them for about 18 years now. Um, and I am a newly, um, new spin illusion spinning wheel dealer. So, um, that's something I'm adding to my uh, little business this year. Um, so Thank you for being here and welcome. You can follow me pretty much everywhere. Um, if you look up Tailspin Farm, you're gonna find me. You can see some of my friends back here. Um, I have, right now I have 17 rabbits. Um, I have a mix of French, English, and um, German Angoras right now. And so yeah, and it is, um, Let's see, what is today? Today is Tuesday, the 23rd of January. It feels like day 457, though. We have not seen much sun, and I am kind of taking advantage of this big window behind, or in front of me here. And um, there is just a tad bit of sun trying to poke through. It's been a really dreary winter here. Um, it is cold out today. We haven't been very cold this winter either, so I'm, again, taking advantage of some of the nice weather to be out here in the barn. So, on to what I wanted to talk to you about today. Um, some of the questions I've had coming in are um, fiber related in regards to French Angoras. Um, I had one of you contact me and um, they had sent me a video in regards to some differences with French Angoras and why you would not want to have them in your fiber um, rabbitry and while some of what what was said in the video is true um, I think it's a balance I think it's always a balance um, you guys have heard the story those of you who have been with me since the beginning when I first started getting into Angora rabbits and spinning I started with the drop spindle and when I started researching Angora rabbits probably closer to 20 years now 20 years ago um, the internet was fairly new. Um, shockingly, it hasn't always been here, but I'm from the era where I remember when we first got internet and I was way long married and had kids. So, um, it has not been around that long. And the early days of internet was blogs. Um, that's mainly what it started out as. When I first started doing this, YouTube wasn't even, I had never heard of YouTube, and actually I am a little bit late to the YouTube game, I think, because um, I just didn't know YouTube was a thing until about 10, 12 years ago. So, and maybe that's when YouTube got, got its start, but I know people were already on there doing their things. So, um, when I first started researching rabbits and spinning and all of the things, because we had one acre, and I wanted a small um, fiber animal. Angora rabbits are what I found. Never knew they existed prior to that. And everything I read said you cannot spin 100% Angora. Absolutely never. Um, and that's mainly what I do. So when it comes to spinning, not, not mainly, but a lot of the stuff I have spun over the years is 100%. That's it, Angora. Um, and so, I think you have to be careful in discerning for yourself. Uh, make sure you're doing lots of research with lots of different people. And I am a firm believer that what one person says might not be true for you. Um, and so you have to do what, what works for you and fits for you. Um, obviously my rabbits are in cages and that's not always true. They do have an outside area and hopefully we just moved into this place 
um, not even a year ago. And so hopefully this summer will be some more outside areas for them and um, a colony where some of them will live outside. But the reality is we've got woods by us and there are critters and um, and you have to be careful with your rabbits. So some people don't like the fact that they're in cages. I consider it just, ooh, there's that sun. <laughs> um, I consider it just a necessity to have them in cages. Um, also, if you just let your rabbits roam and run all over, you would have obviously babies, a lot, a lot of babies because that's what rabbits do. So on to the original um, video here. I wanted to show you, I have, I'm obviously petting a rabbit right now. I'm actually grooming him. Um, this is Chip. And Chip is a broken chest, broken chestnut um, color. And I got him this last summer. And when I pan down, you'll see what I'm talking about with broken chestnut. But I want to show you, um, we were talking, um, this, this gal and I were talking about guard hairs. And the French Angoras do have a lot of guard hairs. Um, I... I don't mind the guard hairs. And what her main question was is that some people won't keep French Angoras and spin them because the guard hairs are scratchy. So I wanted to address that um, first and foremost and then kind of show you what you can tell the difference on Chip um, very easily, the difference between, hopefully it shows up on the film or on the video. Um, you can see the guard hairs come through. And actually guard hairs are some of the beauty of Angora. When you talk about the halo, um, different, different rabbits have different amounts and types of guard hairs. And when you see the Angora yarn with the halo, um, some of that is the guard hairs coming out through there. So let me stop talking and pan you down. Um, let's see. Okay. So this is Chip and he again is a broken chestnut and you can see, um, this is, let me make sure I got this. This is the chestnut color right here. He's broken because he has a considerable amount of uh, white coloring too. It's not, he's not all one color as you can easily see. You can also see, hopefully in this video, you can see his guard hairs. Um, they're, they're kind of right here on top prominently. Um, if you look at the underneath color, this this has very few guard hairs in it, and you can see that. Um, this staple length on Chip today, let me see, will you see that? That's probably about five inches of fur, four or five inches. So he's got some beautiful fiber. Um, but I also wanted to show you, as I'm grooming him, I am getting this. And this, my, uh, this side here, my left side here, um, has quite a few guard hairs and hopefully you can see that. Um, but it is not scratchy. I wish there was touch of vision um, so you guys could feel this, but it's really not scratchy. Again, I think um, what people, when, when you say scratchy, I think of like harsh and Yes, they're a little bit um, not as soft as the, the other fiber that he has, but they're not by any stretch of the imagination scratchy. So I wanted to touch on that today and just show you some of the fiber I'm getting off from him grooming. Um, I have not done a grooming video in a while, so I had someone ask about that. Essentially, um, I have three tools. I do not have a blower. I've never had a blower. I'm also not a show person. Um, I do not show my rabbits. My kids showed their rabbits. He's got some beautiful colors. Can you see the colors there? That's what I love when you look at these rabbits and the lines. Um, my kids did show in 4-H, but my kids are long out of that stage and um, I do not show. I have considered showing at some point maybe, um, but I don't know. I have a lot of other stuff going on and that's just one more thing. So I don't have a blower. I do have um, just dog toenail clippers to clip their nails. They do need that, they get quite long. You just clip the ends of them. Um, these are my favorite shears. They're, they're small and short. I know that they look sharp, but I am 
very careful and I like the angle tip on these. Okay, my camera just shut down. So that's, um, I like the angle tip of these, how it is, because I can kind of, when I am, and I'm not gonna trim him today, I am just combing him. But when I do, I can very carefully go in just like this and just trim, and that's how I would do that. And then my favorite brush, well actually it's comb, is this one, and it has the long and the short prongs that grab the fiber. And so those are the three tools I mainly use. Um, I do not use um, electric, um, an electric razor or an electric, um, oh, I can't even think of the word, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> electric shaver. I do not use that. Um, I just feel like that's too much. I did use to um, shear our goats down when we had them myself and I do have like a, a really nice um, dog shear um, professional one but I just don't use it on the rabbits. I think it's just unnecessary. That's just my opinion. It'd be really easy to use but I prefer just this um, running a comb through them. And you can see in just a few swipes here, I'm gonna get all kinds of fiber. The other thing with these guard hairs, especially on him, he only has um, the heavy ones up here on top. So as I'm combing through, I'm pulling the guard hairs out, or grooming the guard, I'm not pulling them, I'm, I'm simply combing them out. But they're also getting mixed in with all these other soft fibers. And so, it's, and plus a lot of times I will card this fiber together so it kind of blends really well. So you're not getting big clumps of guard hairs when it comes to Angor rabbits. Um, so for a beginner rabbit, I would highly recommend the French um, because of they're, they're easy to take care of. The English has beautiful fiber also, but it also mats a little bit easier. So that's, and they're smaller rabbit. French are um, a little bit bigger than um, English, and so you're gonna get more out of them. If you want to stay away from um, combing or having to worry about um, trimming fiber consistently, again, my rabbits get groomed every one to two weeks. If you wanna skip that and get more bang for your buck fiber-wise, also, I would suggest either a German or a giant. Um, the German and Giants have to be trimmed. They, they don't um, molt or shed their fur like the English and the French do. And so every three months or so, you have to um, trim either with shears or an electric razor, um, trim them right down. And, so, and also, they're a larger breed of rabbit. Um, I'm actually, today I have um, two German, a male and a female, German Angoras together um, in hopes of a batch of German Angora babies here coming up in about 30 days. So I am I am hopeful for that. They are some beautiful chestnut um, German Angoras. I'll probably do a video on them later. But so yeah, that's kind of the ins and outs, real basic of the French and guard hairs. And I hope this answers some of those questions. Um, I would never ever, you know, the main thing is I would never consider, um, I would never consider the guard hairs to be scratchy. And especially once you blend the fibers and spin the fibers, the guard hairs will give you beautiful, um, beautiful halo. The other thing is I think I've also had where I have some, some French, that don't really have guard hairs. And I have some French that have more than others. Like Chip here is kind of a mix of guard hairs and um, just, you know, he's got a good blend where he's got some very soft fiber along with those guard hairs. And once I blend this all together, it's gonna be gorgeous. So I hope that helps. Um, and I will um, get this video posted. You could follow me again on Instagram is mainly where I'm pretty active right now. Instagram, Facebook, and the YouTube channel here. Um, you can go to my website. I have a newsletter that you can subscribe for to get, uh, or subscribe to, to get more information. 
of when we do have babies or products coming out. I am actually um, going to do a sneak peek this afternoon on Instagram. I have some fiber bats coming out, some luxury fiber bats that um, should be ready here probably next week. I'll probably get them in the shop um, in the next few days here and I'll make sure to let you know that too. Uh, I have a name for them so I will give you the name that might give you an idea of what they're going to look like but the fiber bats are going to be a blend of um, Angora that is dyed and I have some alpaca and some pygora that I'm putting together and the name of this bat is going to be the Mittens Winter. So I'll give you a heads up when that comes out and again if you go to my um, website and and subscribe to the newsletter you'll be able to um, know right when those come out so they should be up in the next few days so I hope you guys are having a great day I hope you're creating something today um, and enjoy your day bye